So the Hoagie Epoxy Jig Lure is a Keystone member of the Hoagie Inshore Rating System. So the great thing about the Hoagie Epoxy Jig Lure is all the number of ways you can rig this lure and also the number of different species you can target with it and lastly all the different methods you can use to do so. So today we're going to focus on the Epoxy Jig Lure Unrigged Bulk Packs which A gives you a special savings and B has a collection of all our best selling colors. So there are four different ways you can rig an Epoxy Jig Lure in my opinion for inshore fishing. Number one you have the classic way with a treble hook Number two, an inline single hook. Number three, a bucktail inline single hook. And lastly, if you're vertical jigging, a hoagie assist hook. So let's start with the classic great epoxy jig lure, which is with a single treble hook. Now, I tend to use treble hooks on epoxy jig lures on the smaller sizes, say a 3 8 ounce and 5 8 ounce and I'll take one extra step and mash the barb down. So with all lures, the Hoagie Epoxy Jig lures have an appropriate size treble hook that corresponds with the right size lure. So on our Hoagie system document, I have this nice rigging chart to show me which hook goes with which lure. So today, we're gonna rig with the 5 8 ounce epoxy jig. So I see in this chart, as a treble, we're gonna use a size four BMC treble hook. So now's the time to crack this beautiful package right here. Stripers have been keyed in on sand eels lately, so I'm gonna start with the olive. So I'm gonna go into my system tackle box and pull out my rigging collection here. So I'm gonna open this box and take out a size four treble hook. Every epoxy jig lure that comes in our bulk packs already comes rigged with the split ring. So all you need to do is add the hook. So I'm just gonna line the split ring pliers up with the groove, open it up just a little bit, slide the hook on, rotate it through, and there I go. I have a rigged epoxy jig lure. Last step, I take a pair of high quality pliers. In this case, it's a pair of Vanstall pliers. I'm just gonna mash those hooks down for a quick, safe, easy release. And I practice catch and release pretty much 90% of the time. I often will take one fish home for dinner, but other than that, I, I'd rather lose more fish than injure more fish. Been doing this a long time. And so I want my kids to do it for a long time, so we need to keep these fish healthy. And here I go, a turnkey epoxy jig lure rigged to fish fast for albies and striped bass. So I rig with an inline single when I'm focused on using our larger epoxy jig lures. Now, um, the cool thing about the inline single is it's effective both for vertical jigging and for casting. And the thing I like about an inline single on a larger epoxy jig lure is you're less likely to gill hook a fish because there's more plug for a fish to grab. So this back hook is gonna be less likely to be inside the fish's gullet. So it's just a nice, simple, easy way to rig. It's easy to de-hook. The lure is large enough where you can almost use it as a handle as you're hand dealing with the fish, boat side and an inline single is certainly easy to unhook the fish and get back in the game. So there's really no difference in rigging an inline single versus an, a classic treble hook. Same deal, same split ring plier, same split ring, just different hook. So at this current point in time, it is my belief that smaller epoxy jig lures or smaller jigs fished at high speeds on top water with light gear you're better off with a treble hook rigged epoxy jig lure with the barb smashed down. You're less likely to hook a fish in its gullet and get the lure tangled somewhere, you know, in, the, in its mug or its nose of the bait. The downside is you might injure a few more fish in the process. So this season and last season, I'm gonna pay more attention to uh, the net impacts of singles versus trebles. Now, in my heart of hearts, I believe that the larger 
the epoxy jig lure goes or the larger the jig goes if you're casting. A single hook is ideal because there's a lot more lure for the fish to grab and you're less likely to gill hook the fish. Lastly, I just want to say that I certainly welcome your feedback as anglers uh, to share your past experiences. Again, this is just my opinion on which hook to use when, but collectively, if you share your comments and feedback based on your past experiences, or maybe even this season now that you might be paying more attention, I'd love to know what you're thinking in terms of best practices for catching and releasing healthy fish. So we make inline bucktail teaser hooks for hoagie epoxy jig lures. Now these are great for anglers looking to increase the overall length and profile of their epoxy jig lure. So the beauty of this is you can have a larger profile, in this case almost three inches longer, and still the ability to cast an ultralight tackle. Now in this specific example, the pink with this white bucktail teaser is a great squid imitation. But again, any lure you apply these to, you're gonna extend the length and extend the profile and give the lure a little extra action in the water. So the cool thing about vertical jigging epoxy jig lures is they're lightweight relative to their size. So that's gonna give you the ability to vertical jig in shallow water and also to very finicky tuna and stripers out in deeper water or a slow pitch style jigging method the very natural flutter reaction for finicky fish is the name of the game. So with one bulk pack of hoagie epoxy jig lures unrigged, but with the split rings, I've got a treble rigged epoxy for high speed fishing for top water fish. I have a single rigged epoxy for big stripers or light duty vertical jigging. I have a bucktail teaser to extend the length and profile of my epoxy jig. And I also have a slow pitch style vertical jig that's deadly on finicky fish. 